It's September in the Grow Paradise Garden and it's a month of change with things growing like mad at the start of the month and then starting to turn autumnal now in late September. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a thorough look around the Grow Paradise Garden to show you how this tropical style garden growing in the UK is faring with the move into autumn. Just before we start this video, let me just remind you that we've created a community for you. It's a social network for gardeners. The web address for it is www.growparadise.social. And there is a global community of people that love growing tropical style plants and tropical style gardens. It's free to create an account and you can join groups and post questions and answers in forums. And it's really just aimed at helping everybody grow this style of garden and to create a community that help lift each other up. So it's free to create an account, as I say, so I look forward to going and chatting to you over there. Right, let's get into this look around my tropical style garden. And September for me is a time of change. The garden's transitioning. I mean, at the start of the month, we had probably one of the warmest weeks of the year and plants that love heat, like the banana plants and the colocasias, absolutely put on so much late season growth. But following that, we had a real period of cold. So nighttime temperatures dropped down to five degrees Celsius and that actually triggered some of the autumnal colors to start forming in the garden. Plants like our roost tree started to draw in all of the energy from the leaves, which is causing that fiery orange canopy to form, which is one of the best parts of our garden in autumn. I always look to climates, tropical climates like that of Singapore and Thailand, for looking for planting ideas for my tropical style garden. But if I'm honest, I think living somewhere like that, I'd potentially miss the seasons and all of the change that comes with it. Seeing the canopy turn this fiery orange color is a real marker for me that winter's on the way and it's time for me to start thinking about some of the jobs that I've got to do in the garden before the cold, wet and windy weather really sets in. Now, tender plants like this bromeliad, this is Acmea blanchettiana and this is the orange form, are going to need to be moved indoors over the coming weeks and months. Now, there's no rush. I mentioned earlier that we've had a couple of cold nights, but they're not consistent yet. And short periods of colder nights above freezing don't do too much damage to plants. It's when we get sustained cold, enough time for cells to freeze that causes damage inside of the plants that we're going to really want to protect them. But for me in the south of the UK, I can push that back a little bit later because my microclimate to my location geographically is a little bit warmer. I'm in what's called gardening USDA zone nine. And if you're not familiar with USDA gardening zones, I'll put a link to a video that I did explaining that system. But before cold in autumn, wet and wind can actually do a lot of damage. So this acmea is a bromeliad that needs good draining soil. It hates sitting in wet because the bottom of the plant's gonna rot. And I could smell stagnant water as I was walking up and down the garden path. And the rosette's been catching rainwater, which is exactly what it evolved to do, but it's becoming stagnant. It's raining so much, so much more than it's used to in its natural habitat, that if you turn it upside down, you can see water comes running out. So it's time for me to take this out of the garden and move it into the greenhouse where I can control how much water it gets. Now you'll notice that although it's called the orange form, this one's actually turned back to green and that's because it ended up being in partial shade as the canopy of the garden developed. So I'm gonna put this somewhere sunny inside of the greenhouse so that it can develop that lovely orange color again. Now other bromeliads, like these Neorogelia, I've grown epiphytically, tied into the trees in my tropical style garden. And because they're growing this way, any excess rainwater can just run down past the roots. So I'm not too worried about these just yet. I'm gonna see if I can get away with leaving them tied onto the trees for a little bit longer. And I'm hoping that I won't actually have to untie any of my tropical bromeliads from the trees in my UK tropical style garden until just before the first frost, but subscribe and see when I actually do it because although I want to push my luck, I don't want to lose these plants because I absolutely love growing bromeliads. 
And for me, the same rule generally applies to plants like this Aeonium. Any plant that has succulent leaves that is more on the tender side of the cold hardiness spectrum is going to stay out until there's a forecast of frost and then I'll move in. Because they're succulent leaved, they hold so much water, which means there's a lot more moisture inside of these leaves that can freeze and expand. And do what I mentioned earlier, when they freeze and expand, that's when cells rupture and the plant gets damaged. But while we're above zero, there's no frost on the horizon. I'm going to leave this out for as long as possible. But as I look closely, there is one problem. With a lot of rain and moisture on the ground, slugs and snails come out to play. So this is covered in tiny snails at the moment. So when I am going to move it into the greenhouse, I'm going to have to take great care, just making sure that there's no stowaways that make it into the controlled environment inside of my greenhouse. Now, we've talked about how wet can damage plants in a tropical style garden as autumn approaches. We've talked about how cold can damage tropical style plants, tender plants, as winter approaches. But wind is another issue. So many of these plants have great big leaves that will just catch wind as it howls through any garden. And if you're growing plants in pots like this Musa Chismania, that I'm growing in a pot because I grew it from seed, so I just want to be able to easily move it into the greenhouse if there is any severe cold. The wind is going to catch those big leaves and it just blows it over. And it's not just plants in pots. Behind me is Impatiens tinctoria and a massive Fuchsia boliviana, both of which have quite tender stems that can snap easily in the wind. And because they've grown so vigorously in that early heat that we had in September, it's really soft growth. And then the late winds have just caused them all to snap or lean over. Um, so plants in pots, I'm just gonna pick them up, either tie them in to a support, or I'm gonna move them into the greenhouse. Plants with the tender stems, now is a perfect time and an opportunity that nature's showing me I need to take cuttings. Any of the growth that snaps off, just prepare it as a cutting, remove the lower leaves, cut the snap above to a healthy node, and either put it into a well-drained potting mix or into a glass jar on a windowsill. And you should be able to propagate that plant as a cutting and then you can regrow backup plants or if you don't have enough space, like say me, share them with friends and family. September is also a brilliant time or autumn in general, just to look at what has and hasn't worked in your garden. And I think it's necessary for us all to make mistakes. It's the only way we're gonna gain experience and learn. And every single plant and garden is different. So what works for one person, might not work for another. Plants just don't read the rule books. So see what we can get away with in our own gardens. And for me, this hardy begonia, begonia grandis, and this is the white flowering form, alba, has been a fantastic addition to this shady border. So it's basking in morning sun now, but for the rest of the day, this border is in shade. And this year, I think I've got it to look the best that I have out of all of the years that I've been growing the Grow Paradise tropical style garden. And that's because I've added a mix of shade loving, hardy, exotic style plants here. So plants like Begonia pedata feeder, Begonia grandis are all hardy shade loving plants. And in autumn, this one has the added bonus of producing sprays of these beautiful white flowers. So this is a real win and I'm going to try and spread more of this plant around my garden, especially in those difficult shady areas. And it's completely hardy, so it's going to come back every year bigger and better. Now, when I say that it's necessary for us to make mistakes, I think it's only fair that I share one of mine. And I think trying to grow this Canna Tropicana Black in this spot this year was a mistake because I thought it would get enough height to produce lovely red flowers because it would get enough sunlight here. And I was wrong. As the canopy developed over the top of this area, these cannas were cast into shade. Now, I left them where they were because the purple picked up on the purple of the sugar cane really nicely. So the foliage had a bit of interest in the Grow Paradise Garden, but I didn't get those lovely tropical looking canna flowers. So I'm gonna lift these, divide the rhizomes um, and grow them in containers until I decide where I'd possibly like to grow them next season. And this is exactly what I mean. Try something, don't be afraid to just give it a go. And if it doesn't work, tweak it and iterate it. Gardens just, they're not ever done. It's a continual process of tweaking and improving. And then you'll create the perfect space for you um, and the wildlife that visits your garden. Now for me, one area that I feel has been a real success in the Grow Paradise Garden this year is what we called at the start of the year, the jungle style border that's packed full of evergreen, tropical style plants, some deciduous ones, but it's all the weird and wonderful foliage plants. Now, 
The Fazio Polycarpo green fingers recovered quickly from that freeze in winter and it's filling out this corner really well. And I'd say that's in partial shade and it's doing the best it's ever done. Our loquat tree with the enormous corrugated leaves has put on easily four or five foot of growth this year and it's gonna need a prune in spring to make sure it doesn't get too big for my small garden space. Pushing up through here is our Musa Basju, the hardiest banana that you can grow in the UK. Now this one, has just got ridiculous this year. It's absolutely enormous, but the leaves are shredded. And I did a post recently on Instagram saying that when I can see that the banana leaves are shredded, it's a sure sign that autumn has arrived in the Grow Paradise Garden. That, the fact that the hammock's been put away and I can't decide when I come out whether I need a jumper or not. Now, another plant that's done really well, and it's sort of only just pushed up through kind of the canopy of this area is Roldana Christobalensis. And this is, a lovely purple underside to the leaf with these big green frog feet shapes looking leaves. It's a nice plant. That's one that's got that tender stems. So with the autumn winds that we're getting at the moment, I'm gonna to have to remember to come out and propagate that from stem cutting so that I've got some backup plants in the greenhouse. Now, this leaf is Brassiopsis mitis. This one is planted into the ground. So it's said to be completely hardy. It will lose all of, all of its leaves in winter and it should quickly recover in spring. Now, this is a fast grower, so I'm not too worried about losing the tip of the stem, but they are very, very hard to come by, so I don't want to lose the whole plant. Um, I'm too scared to take a cutting of this because it's a single stemmed plant. So if we do get severe cold, I will probably wrap it just to preserve the stem. And then behind that is the Fuchsia Boliviana, which I talked about earlier, which has grown just to ridiculous Heights. This was a seed two years ago. Um, when I put it in the ground this year, it was only maybe about two or three foot high. And then in front of that is our Impatiens tinctoria. This is a giant South African Impatiens. And I've actually not had any flowers on this this year, but I've had loads of vegetative growth. And I think that's probably due to a lack of light getting to it because there is just so much foliage here. Now, I don't know if you can see at the back, my papaya tree, my mountain papaya, again, has doubled in size this year. I'm not gonna be able to fit, fit it into the greenhouse. It's reasonably cold tolerant, so I'm probably gonna leave that one out as well. It's actually in a pot that's sunk into the ground. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to fleece it just because I've got nowhere that it's gonna fit, which is a shame because it's a really nice plant and it's obviously happy where it is. And then I've got some more of these tropical bromeliads over on this side. Now. For me, I love foliage, but considering what I might change next year, I think next year in the Grow Paradise Garden, I'm gonna try and add a lot more big, bold, tropical style flowers to get a lot of color in and to get a lot more pollinating insects in. I've got salvias, um, I've got a rose climbing up the wall and really not much else. I have the large Brugmantias, they flower from mid to late summer, but there's not that many flowers in the garden and I just want to get hits of colour next year. So I think that's a change that I'm going to bring in to this area. And that's what I mean. It's always all about change and just seeing what works for you. One thing that I am happy about is the number of evergreen plants that I've got in this border. So I'm not too worried about winter coming because this area is just going to hold its own and it's going to look so exotic all winter long. And I did a recent video talking about the evergreens that you can use to create winter structure in a tropical style garden. So I'll put a link up to that. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas and inspiration and made you not feel so bad if your garden's starting to get a bit beaten up by that autumnal weather. It's okay, it's part of the process of change, it's part of the process of gardening. Don't forget to get out and enjoy the garden while it's looking as full as it is because over the coming weeks and months, things are really gonna start to change and we're gonna look at overwintering a lot more of these tender plants. Now, if you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support the channel. And we've also got our own social network for gardeners just like you that love growing tropical style plants, weird and wonderful gardens. Its web address is www.growparadise.social. There is a community of people from around the world there sharing tips and advice, and there's forums where you can post questions and answers. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.